buongiorno from our second to last day here in Rome. We are going to the place you're supposed to go when you come to Rome, which is the Colosseum. <laughs> booked a tour that I think is like three hours that takes us through the gladiators gate and the arena floor and then over to the uh, Roman Forum and all of that jazz. So. But first we gotta get there. <laughs> yes, and maybe some food. <laughs> We ran into the dreaded every single Uber and taxi canceled us this morning and instead of a nice 10 minute drive from our Airbnb, we ran a 40 minute walk and made it in 30. So, but we're here. We just got into, uh, I think, the Roman Forum Palatine Hill area. Uh, we've learned so far that Palatine Hill was for all of the aristocrats, all the rich people, everybody else got shoved out. Tour is moving, we'll keep going. <laughs> This tour is very, very fast. We are blown and going, learning tons of information. We took a quick water break to refill our bottles. And the big thing that we learned is the reason why the Roman Forum is in such terrible condition is in medieval times, they opened it up as a quarry of materials and you could come take whatever you wanted. So that's why there's so little left of it. The other really interesting thing that we learned, so many of the porches and doorways that we're walking past that were built later on in the 1500s, 1600s, they're meters higher than where we are now. That was the street level then. There was just so much mud and debris over years from flooding from the river and just more construction, more construction. The ground level had built up that much. <laughs>
moving right along. We are in the Coliseum now. I promise we will give you some updates when we have time to breathe. around us, eh? between 50,000 and 80,000 spectators yelling at us, eating well, we to fight and possibly die. Okay, yeah. It was super we'll noisy, eh? super Stay scary still, Henry, for the gladiators and the animals. As you can notice really? nowadays, taking a look around, the most of the seats for the, for the spectators have gone. The only seats that you can still see are those white blocks. Eh? We have a few minutes to take some pictures before we move on to the upper levels. I will fill you in on the information we just learned about this area. We are standing on a reconstructed arena floor. Behind me you can see all of the corridors uh, that were down below. Those were not uh, part of the original construction. Before those were here, this basin could be filled with water for all of the naval battles. Once the corridors were built underneath, they didn't do that anymore. Um, the other really cool thing about the underground part as they had all these cages that the fighters or the animals would stay in and those cages would be raised <laughs> up you. to a trap door and that trap door would open and they would enter through the floor there are there well there were 70 trap doors on this arena floor and the spectators didn't know which trap door they were going to come out of which was part of the thrill. We're gonna look around a little bit more here and then we get to go up into the arena parts. There aren't any of the seating areas left. They've all gone. Again, this place was opened as a quarry of materials at one point in time. That's why a lot of it is gone nowadays. There's only one little section of seating left that you can still see part of the marble um, benches where they had the names of the senators. senators that were allowed, they had assigned seating essentially. So there's a, a couple of those left and just try to imagine the rest of the place filled with that. We're done. Three hours of tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of information. One of the things we like about tours is that we actually get to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. One of the hard things about tours is you don't get to 
Stop. spend time just kind of thinking about it, moving around. So luckily they gave us some time at the Coliseum after, after the tour was done. She just left us here. And we've just been sitting for a little bit just Taking to kind a break. of take and a break. And soak it in, really, because you move so fast with a tour guide that you, you don't really have the time to think about where you're standing and what you're seeing and what you're touching and all those kinds of things. So it is nice to kind of sit for a minute, just breathe it in. If we could do this over, I really think I'd have preferred to come on our own, but we just didn't know what kind of time we were gonna have. If you love history, if you're anything like us, I could have spent an entire day in the Roman Forum, an entire day at the Palatine Hill, an entire day at the Colosseum. There's so much to see and so much to learn. I'm sure if you got a really good audio guide that you could just walk around and listen to. Days here, days. Uh, our tour guide was very knowledgeable. <laughs> I'm so sorry we did not get her name. We were putting our earbuds in when she was telling everybody her name, but she was very smart. Um, she led us around. She showed us everything that we possibly could think of. I couldn't think of any questions for her. She told us a bunch of cool things about how, like, gladiators weren't what they were portrayed as in most films, where they're just, like, really really jacked or shredded guys. They were actually had a belly on them to try to protect their internal organs from being cut and like how they were treated throughout. And then a bunch of uh, information about the classes and like where like people, certain classes and even women fell in the Roman society. We also learned a lot over in the Roman Forum about this special order of priestesses. Um, and I wanted to touch on that because it just sort of blew my mind that these children were chosen between the ages of six and ten to be priestesses for this temple and one of their sole jobs was to keep this fire going in this temple because it was um, basically like as long as the flame burns Rome is golden if the flame goes out Rome will fall so one of their biggest jobs was to keep this flame going uh, they got chosen between the ages of six and ten they had to serve for 30 years they had to remain virgins so by the time that they were released from their service between the ages of, what, like 34 and 40, 36 and 40, um, then you could choose to marry if you wanted to and have children, but by that time you were generally too old and nobody wanted to marry you anyway, so most of these women stayed with the priesthood. The other crazy thing is that if you lost your virginity, they would bury you alive. And the reason they chose to bury you alive is because you could not spill the blood of one of these priestesses because they were so holy. So they didn't kill you. They just buried you alive and you just you just died later. However, out of the hundreds, I think she said there were... 20? Out of hundreds and thousands of them, there was only 20 that's ever happened to. So yeah. still and too many, but not... As she said, not, 20 too many. Yeah. A few little logistical pieces of advice. Bring a water bottle. They have... What, we passed four or five places that you can refill your water bottle, so definitely bring water. It is hot. Uh, we are here. It is, what is today? September, mid-September. Mid-September, yeah, so. It's very, very hot. We started this tour at 1030. It was like 80 degrees when we started, sweating bullets within minutes. And it, there's definitely places hot. where it's just sun just and sun. there's not much shade. Our tour guide was very good finding shady spots to talk to us in and then kind of letting mm -hmm. us go out, go around and take pictures and stuff. But other than that, bring a bottle of water and also sunscreen, hat, all, all that stuff. All of that jazz. I would be very curious to come here and visit in the low season. We are still very much in the high season. It is packed. If you want to get any sort of picture or just stop and breathe for a second, good luck because it is a flood of people that is just continually moving. So it, it's very, very busy. If you have the opportunity to come in the slow season, do it. Even though this is a big touristy thing, um, I think this is the one thing that everyone comes to Rome and thinks about is the Colosseum. So definitely come and see it. Deal with the crowds, deal with the heat. It is 100% worth it to be in a place that you've heard about so much throughout your life and you've seen her represented in like TV shows and film and things like that. It's, it's something else to be here and to kind of like see the scope of it. So it's definitely worth it. And remember, when you come, as hard as it can be sometimes, take a minute pause, put your phone down, stop taking pictures, just really, really remember where you're standing and think of the history of this place, how ancient it is, all the things that happened here. We forget a lot, so friendly reminder, breathe it in. Now we are going to hit the gift shop and yes. probably get some things, maybe, who knows, and then we're going to find something to eat because we were in a rush to get here this morning and we barely had anything to eat and I am starving. Same. And then... We may just go back to our Airbnb and take a chance to rest. We have been running nonstop, and even on the days where we've said, we're gonna go rest, 
We didn't. Uh, so maybe we'll do that today if it's anything like the rest of the days. We won't, but, <laughs> but we're thinking about it. That's what counts. We just got back to our neck of the woods. We stopped into one of the first restaurants we saw, and it happens to be very much candy themed. Pretty cute. Hopefully, the food's good. one each of the soup leaf. We've only ever had the regular ragu, but we also got a cacio e pepe, which is like a pepper and cheese. It sounds like a sheep's milk sauce or something. So we'll cut that one open and see what it looks like. Oh, I think, I think you're gonna like this one. Wow. The pepper flavor has such a depth to it that I was not prepared for. That's really good. The other one is good, but I think I still like the original better. Same. If I'm being entirely honest, I could probably just eat two soupli and be very full and have dessert, but instead uh, we also got entrees and Billy didn't realize how big his pizza was going to be, so we're definitely going to kind of share, try to eat it all. They also have dessert that looks really tasty, we'll see how far we get. <laughs> this pizza has potatoes on it and I just got it because I thought it was kind of funny and the waiter says when he drops it off because here's your fish and chips, which is a good valid point because that's what this is. <laughs> Lydia wants me to clarify, it's sausage, it's not fish, but it is potatoes on pizza, so. Like a potato with like pizza crust is it's not bad, but it's, it's, it's a different texture. <laughs> I'm still gonna eat it. I've probably gotten some semblance of this dish every time we sat down, but I know what I like. I know stuff. It's so good. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. We're kinda gotta wrap it out for today. I've got some work to do, so we gotta go home. Coliseum was amazing. Go see it. There's a car coming down the road, so I have to move over. Yes, they fit. You have to watch out. <laughs> anyway, time for a nap and a shower, I think.